the equation x minus 1 times x minus 2 times etc. x minus 2016 equals the same expression is written on the board with 216 linear factors on each side. What is the least possible value of k for which it is possible to erase exactly k of these 4032 linear factors so that at least one factor remains on each side and the resulting equation has no real solutions? What is written on the board is identity. When we erase any factors from both sides, we must be sure not to leave the same factor on both sides, because that equation will have a solution when that factor, identical on both sides, is equal to zero. So we must erase at least 2016 factors. Let's see if we can erase those factors in such a way that the equation with remaining 2016 factors on both sides doesn't have any real solutions. All the factors of the target equation are linear polynomials in the form x minus a, where constant numbers a are 1, 2, 3, etc. up to 2016. The sequence of these numbers is the arithmetic sequence, and so is the sequence of the first four numbers, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And therefore, the sum of the first and fourth members equals the sum of the second and third members. And if we consider the products of the first and fourth linear polynomials and the product of the second and third, the result is two quadratic polynomials whose graphs, parabolas, are translated copies of each other. We'll call them low parabola and high parabola. It's obvious that for any real argument x, the value of high parabola equals the value of low parabola plus 2. These are two translated copies, of which one is the result of parallel shifting of the other one straight vertically up, two units. We can also consider more translated copies of these parabolas if we shift it four units to the right multiple times. The formula for that is the same quadratic polynomial in which x minus 4 times k is substituted for x, where integer number k equals 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. up to 503. The result of that is 504 times 2 equals 1008 linear polynomials. Note that after the substitution, the resulted quadratic polynomials are easily transformed to the form used in this problem. It's the product of linear polynomials in the form x minus a. It's easy to see that these constant numbers a in the polynomial x minus a cover the entire sequence of natural numbers 1, 2, 3, etc., 2016, when k varies from 0 to 503. The idea used to solve this problem is to construct the target equation in which the product of 504 functions of low parabolas are kept on the left and the product of 504 functions of high parabolas is kept on the right in this equation. Let's call the product of 504 functions of low parabolas the low polynomial, and the product of 504 functions of high parabolas the high polynomial. The hypothesis is that this equation has no real numbers that satisfy this equation, because for every real number x, the value of high polynomial is greater than the value of the low polynomial for the same argument x. This diagram shows two curves. The red curve is the graph of the product of functions of two adjacent high parabolas, the high polynomial, and the blue curve is the graph of the product of functions of two adjacent low parabolas, the low polynomial. This diagram shows the graphs of two pairs of adjacent high and low parabolas. The actual number of such pairs is 504 to cover the entire sequence of integer numbers from 1 to 2016. Note that all four parabolas shows on this diagram are 
exactly identical. They are translated copies of each other. You can shift any one of them vertically and or horizontally, and it will exactly match any other of these parabolas. Each high parabola is two units above the corresponding low parabola. Note that the high parabolas have zeros at points 2, 3, 6, and 7, and the low parabolas have zeros at points 1, 4, 5, and 8. Our hypothesis is that two target functions, the products of functions of all high parabolas and the product of functions of all low parabolas, the high and low polynomials, do not intersect. For each real number x on the x-axis, the value of high polynomial is greater than the value of the low polynomial. One small detail is left. We need to prove it. Let's examine all areas of the domain of high and low functions and the resulting high and low polynomials. It's clear that for all x that are less than 1, the value of high polynomial is greater than the value of the low polynomial because the value of all parabolas are positive, and therefore the product of all values of high parabolas is greater than the product of all the values of low parabolas, when x is less than 1. When x equals 1, or other zeros of low polynomials, the value of low polynomial is 0, and the value of high polynomial is positive. So again, the low polynomial is less than the high polynomial. For all x that are greater than 1 and less than 2, the value of the low polynomial is negative and the value of high polynomial is positive. So again, the relation we want to prove holds. The same is true for intervals 3 to 4, 4 to 5, 5 to 6, 7 to 8, and for x greater than 8. When x equals 2 or 3 or 6 or 7, or other zeros of high polynomials, the value of high polynomial equals zero, and the value of uh, low polynomial is negative. So high polynomial is greater than the value of the low polynomial at these points. The last case is the intervals between 2 and 3, 6 and 7, etc. That is, between adjacent zeros of high parabolas. Within these intervals, the values of both high parabola and low parabola are negative, while the values of all other parabolas are positive. Let's examine this case. If there are two inequalities, both with relation less than, and one of the inequalities has two negative numbers, while the other inequality has two positive numbers, then the product of two left-hand sides is not necessarily less than the product of the right-hand side. For example, if one inequality is minus 2 is less than minus 1, and the other inequality is 1 is less than 10, if we multiply them, we will get minus 2 is less than minus 10, which is obviously wrong. In this situation, when one inequality has negative numbers and the other is positive numbers, the result of their multiplication depends on these numbers. Because the product is negative, the resulting inequality holds if and only if the ratio of two sides of the negative inequality is dominant over such ratio for the positive inequality. In the example we saw, minus 2 is less than minus 1 and 1 is less than 10, the positive inequality has dominant ratio 10 to 1, while negative has ratio 2 to 1. If we reverse this, if first inequality is minus 10 is less than minus 1, and the positive inequality is 1 is less than 2, the inequality of the products will be minus 10 is less than minus 2, which is correct. Let's denote the absolute value of the y-coordinate of the high parabola within this interval between 2 and 3 by small letter L. Then we can see that L varies from 0 0.25, or 1 quarter, at the vertex of the high parabola, to 0 at 0.2, or 3. Then the ratio of absolute values of low parabola to high parabola 
that is L plus 2 over L, increases from 9 to infinity. The important result of this analysis is that 9 is the minimal value of this ratio. Let's get back to this diagram and understand what's going on within the interval 2 and 3 or 6 and 7, etc. For each x that belongs to any such interval, the values of both high and low polynomials are negative. If we want to prove that the value of low polynomial is less than the value of high polynomial, we actually need to prove that the absolute value of the high polynomial is less than the absolute value of the low polynomial. And we have proved that the ratio of absolute values of low parabola to high parabola within uh, such interval varies from 9 to infinity. If we prove that the product of all such ratios in all other 503 parabolas at this point is less than 9, that will prove that the value of low polynomial is less than the value of high polynomial at the same point x. It's obvious that the ratio of values of a high parabola over a low parabola decreases sharply when the distance between argument x and the x-coordinate of the vertex of both parabolas is increased. So, to evaluate the largest possible product of such ratios of all the parabolas that are located to the right of the current parabola, we must evaluate it at the right end of our interval, such as x equals 3. And to evaluate it for all the parabolas that are located to the left, we need to evaluate it at the left end of our interval, such as x equals 2. And due to symmetry, these values are the same, whether we evaluate it at the left or the right end of the current interval. So, the ratio of the negative component is 9. And we will prove that this ratio is dominant over the product of the ratios of all the positive components. For that, I have calculated the positive ratios of a high parabola over low parabola at the right end of our interval, x equals 3, for the first nine parabolas, whose functions are x minus 5 times x minus 8 and x minus 6 times x minus 7 for the first pair of parabolas, then x minus 9 times x minus 12 and x minus 10 times x minus 11. And I continued these calculations for the first nine parabolas and came up with the product of these ratios 1.303. The last ratio, number nine, is the smallest one and it already has two zeros after the decimal point. To evaluate the largest possible product of all 503 ratios of high over low parabolas with positive values, I raised the smallest ratio, number 9, 1.00159, to the power of 242, which is 252 minus 10. This power equals 1.4688. Then I multiplied the product of the first nine ratios times the upper bound of the product of 242 next ratios. This is the number of parabolas on each side of the parabola that's in the middle of all 504 parabolas. The result of this multiplication is 1.9139. Then I multiplied it by 2 to cover all 504 parabolas and came up with what I believe is the upper bound of the product of ratios of high parabolas corresponding low parabolas with positive values in the given interval. And it's close to 3.8278, which is less than 9. If we calculate for any other parabola that is not in the middle, but farther away from the first or the last one, then the result will be even smaller. That proves the point that for all real arguments x, the value of the high polynomial is greater than the value of the low polynomial. 
which means that their graphs don't intersect. And so if the low polynomial is on one side of the equation and the high polynomial is on the other side of the equation, then this equation does not have real solutions. So the answer to this problem is that it's possible to construct such equation after erasing 2016 factors of the initial identity. We're done.